So you want to build a press. Maybe you're a really destructive person that just wants to break stuff just for fun. Maybe you're a blacksmith and a press is the next piece of equipment needed in order to enhance your craft. With a hammer, it could take all day to destroy your $20 piece of steel. But with a press, you could do it in seconds. In this video series, we set out to make a press that can produce 24 pounds of force. Now that's a lot of damage! A Mazda Miata weighs roughly one ton, or for those of you in Rio Linda, that's 2,000 pounds. Imagine 24 Mazda Miatas stacked on top of your knife, or watermelon. One, two... Without further ado, let's jump into the design of this bad boy. Here she is, robustly built of H-beam, C-channel, and some good old fashioned American ingenuity. The press is controlled by a lever, sending pressurized hydraulic fluid into the cylinder, resulting in a big squish at the top of the press. This moving part in the center is where all the mechanical magic happens. Well, not really, but it does guide the entire assembly and produce some good squish. I believe it's actually called the carriage, but we called it the trolley for some reason and then it kind of stuck and now we keep calling it the trolley so no matter what you hear carriage or trolley it's the same damn thing the center is composed of a vertical one inch thick piece of steel with the horizontal piece resting atop of it the sides are a half inch thick with a slot cut to allow the flow of grease through the four zerk fittings this slot continues into the side plate spacers and through to the outside side plates. In theory, this lubricates the assembly by spreading grease across the entire sliding surfaces of the I-beams, and your hands, and your clothes, and your entire shop. The carriage moves vertically due to force from the hydraulic cylinder, which is rated at, you guessed it, 24 tons. This is attached to the frame at the bottom to a stack of one inch steel atop a horizontal piece of four inch wide, five sixteen inch thick H-beam. This is the same H-beam that comprises the rest of the frame, including the vertical sliding surfaces that the carriage rides on. Some additional support is provided with more H-beam at the top, including a horizontal cross member and two diagonal pieces. All of this heavy steel sits atop two eight inch wide pieces of C-channel for stability and ease of moving with the forklift. This press will weigh about 800 pounds. Having a way to move this thing is probably a good idea. The way the press works might seem like magic, but it's actually really simple. It all starts with the giant electric motor powering the hydraulic pump, which makes a lot of pressure. Hydraulic pumps run continuously, circulating hydraulic fluid through the entire system. First, the hydraulic fluid is picked up from a storage tank and then sent through the control valve. On its way back to the storage tank, it passes through an oil filter. The pump then picks up fluid from the tank again, and the cycle continues. This is essentially a standby mode. The valve is in its neutral position and pushes fluid straight through to the outlet. However, when the valve is moved up or down, fluid is diverted to one of the two lines connected to the hydraulic cylinder. When fluid travels to the top of the cylinder, the ram is retracted. Flip the valve the opposite direction and fluid will be sent to the bottom of the cylinder, extending the ram. The control valve is typically operated by rotating the lever up or down. Because we are building our press for blacksmithing, we want to keep both of our hands freed up in order to control the steel that we are squishing. We accomplish this by hooking up a foot pedal to the lever. Lastly, in order to add versatility, we added an interchangeable die plate setup. These plates contain different dies for pressing steel in different ways. Some blacksmithing dies include flat pressing dies, drawing dies, fullering dies, and even punches. For the top plate, pull the key and the plate slides right out. The bottom plate comes off by pulling the two pins that hold each side. Simply drop in different die plates and you're good to go. If you are interested in plans for building this press yourself, they will be available for purchase at the link in the description. Modeling this beast took many, many hours, 
and buying these plans is a great way to support our channel and what we do. Plans will include a bill of materials, detailed drawings, thorough instructions, and CAD models. If you do decide to buy plans, our stuff will always be on YouTube and we will always be here to answer questions and help you along your own build. In the next video, we're gonna show you how we built this piece. So please like, comment, and subscribe, and we will be back for more to finish out this series and get this press pressing. Thanks.